Welcome to the Faith Assembly Livestream. Our goal here at Faith is to help you connect, grow, and go. We want to help you connect to active faith, grow in that faith by providing opportunities to do so, and then to go and live out the Great Commission. Our prayer is that as you join us in this time of worship and studying the Word, that you will be encouraged and you too would connect, grow, and go. Thanks for joining us and we hope you enjoy the service. about what God's doing in this place and in your lives. And man, how many of you happy that he's given us freedom and brought us out of the depths of sin? Amen. Let's sing a song. I was buried beneath my shame But who could carry that kind of weight? It was my dream Till I met you I was breathing in the
than I could ask or even imagine according to the power that is within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for generations to come, forever and ever. Amen. If you believe in this place this morning, that the same miracles that we read about in the word of God and the same miracles that we've seen in this place and the same miracles that we've seen in our society that God has done, if you believe that he can do it again, I want you to lift your hands all over this place. I want you to lift your voices with a shout of praise and lift your voices with a shout of thanksgiving saying, God, I believe that you can do it again. Whatever it is that you've been wanting, whatever it is that you've been asking him for, reach your hands and your hearts and your minds to heaven and say, God, I believe that you can do it again. Amen. Come on, let's give him a shout. Of sing this course one more time. I want you in faith for whatever it is you're believing for. Say, God, I believe in your promise. No matter what else the doctors say, no matter what else my situation tells me, I'm choosing to stand on your promise. Why do I stand on your promise? Because you've always been faithful. You've never let me down. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your faithfulness. We thank you so much that your promises are true. God, that you never let us down and that you never will. I'm going to sing this out of faith. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still
Shout to the Lord this morning. Come on, somebody, give him praise if you believe that this morning. That you are who he says you are. You are redeemed. You are transformed. You have been made alive in Christ. You who were dead in your trespasses and sins has he made alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been made more than conquerors today. Through Christ Jesus who loves you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Won't you give the Lord another pray, praise this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can be seated for just a second this morning uh, and just continue to rejoice in your hearts as we share this morning. I want to highlight something that happened this weekend. Uh, how many of you ladies attended our Power Up Party on Friday evening. Come on, let me hear you. There you go. There you go. Wasn't that a wonderful time in the Lord? Amen. A powerful time. And I asked my wife here this morning to share a little bit about what happened uh, this weekend at the Power Up Party. So, honey, would you just share a little bit of what happened? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we just want to give it a praise. We just had a wonderful time. You know, it is
Thank you, Lord. We're going to continue to worship this morning with our tithes and offerings, so I invite our ushers to come and uh, wait on you this morning for that purpose. And uh, tell you what, Jeffrey, you just come right on up here with me. Those of you that don't know, this is Jeffrey Urell. Everybody say, hello, Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey does an awesome job coordinating our ushers every week and uh, works diligently at that. We appreciate him and his ministry here in the church. Jeffrey always needs some help. Right, Jeffrey? All right. So if you'd be interested in serving with these guys, we invite you to come see Jeffrey. You can handle that, right? All right. And, and help us out here. It's a powerful ministry here in the church. Uh, maybe your perception of it is different, but we, we love our ushers and, and these guys that wait on us every week and serve us here in the body. And we appreciate Jeffrey and his whole team. So see Jeffrey if you'd like to serve in the usher ministry. Thank you, Jeffrey. Bless you, man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to pray. And we're going to worship the Lord with our giving. But I don't know if you've ever had any bondage or any chains that you needed to be shaken off. But as our ushers pass by this morning, if the words, the melody of our choir bears witness in your heart, I want you to worship with everything you've got this morning. Amen? We'll be back to share a word with you in just a little bit. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness towards us, Lord. Father, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your presence, Lord, that you have graced us here this morning. Lord, surely your word is true that where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them because we have found you here in this place today. God, I just pray that you would continue to minister to hearts, Lord, as we give our offerings, as we bring our tithes today to the storehouse. Lord, that you would just bless in abundance both the gift and the giver today, God. Lord, for those that give out of their need, Father, I just pray that you would open doors of opportunity over their lives. God, for those that give out of their abundance, I just pray that you would continue to entrust to them and rain down in their lives, Lord. Return it to them, pressed down, shaken together and running over, Lord. And we give you the glory and all of the honor and all of God's people said, amen. God bless you as you give. Welcome to Faith Assembly. Thanks for joining us. If you're a first time guest, we want to ask you to grab a connection card from the seat in front of you. If you will fill that out front and back and take it to our guest connections table, we have a gift for you. Welcome home. Reaching Our City's Kids is an outreach program bringing the gospel to kids in our area. The ROP team will be meeting at the Kittrell Town Apartments this summer. We are in need of volunteers who are passionate about reaching the kids in our community with the gospel. If you're interested in this, there will be an informational meeting on Sunday, June 3rd with Joe Bicknell and Gretchen Williams in room 108 immediately following service. Pizza will be provided. Hey Voltage, we're having a spark night on June 15th. We will leave the church at five o'clock. We'll be going to the Pelicans in Washington to play mini golf. We'll eat supper at Taco Bell, we'll play mini golf, and then we'll have some snow cones. Sign up at faith-assembly.org. Shipwrecked VBS is coming up on July 23rd to the 27th and we need your help. If you're interested in helping out with VBS, visit faith-assembly.org slash events. Click on the VBS volunteer link and you can find a complete list of ministry opportunities. Hey Voltage, you do not want to miss the Ohana experience this year for camp. It will be held July 17th through 20th at a new facility, the Ridgecrest Conference Center. Our speaker for the week will be Chris Estrada. You can get signed up at faith-assembly.org. Hope to see you there. Donuts with Dad is on June 17th at 9.30 a.m. in the foyer right here at Faith Assembly. Come join us for an awesome time of fellowship as we celebrate our dads. Christmas. 
Kids Camp is coming up July 9th through the 13th at Crowder's Ridge in Gastonia, North Carolina. If your child is interested in attending, please visit faith-assembly.org slash events for more information. Hey, Voltage and friends, I'm so excited you're here today. Your special mission will begin right after service. Meet your generals in room 106 for your special instructions. We want to let you know about some exciting ministry opportunities we have in the production department here at Faith. We have opportunities in sound and media, lighting, as well as live stream, which just in the past three weeks, we've had over 1,500 views on our stream. We also want to include photography for our social media page. Now, even if you don't have experience in any of these areas, you can still be a part. We have a place for you if you can just click a button. If you're interested, we want you to text Media Team to 97000. Well, good morning again, Faith family. It is so good to see you and to have the opportunity to share together with you this wonderful worship celebration. What a time it has been already. Amen? Amen. I want to ask you to do something with me this morning. If you would just stand one more time. If you believe that before this meeting has concluded that the Holy Spirit can just show up in this place and do something dynamic and remarkable that this would be a milestone moment in your life I want you to stretch a hand to heaven right now and prepare your heart to receive father we come before you in the strong name of Jesus God, I invite you, Lord, to work through the message today. Lord, as you have through the worship, Lord, as you have thus far in this meeting today, Lord, I just pray, God, that you would continue. Lord, that our hearts and our focus would be steadfastly upon you for the remainder of this time together, God, with a great expectancy, Lord. And Father, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor because as we've already sang today, we believe that you can do it again. And we give you the glory and all of the honor in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. You may be seated today if you have your Bible with you. If you would turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 37. If you would just turn there and hold your place. I'm a long way from there at this point. I'll just let you know that. But we're going to be heading that direction. And I want you to be ready when we get there because we're going to go quick, okay? All right, so I want to, I want to do something a little different this morning in the, in the, uh, usual, from the usual construct of my messages. I'm going to share with you just a little something uh, different. I want to give you some points for consideration this morning, uh, things that I see regarding ministry in the church because we are both continuing and concluding this little three-part series here as we've returned to our topic of together again. And um, we're today talking about being together in ministry. And a couple of weeks ago, I challenged you guys with the thought that you would not reference me as your minister as if there's some differentiation in that I have a ministry and you don't because we all have a ministry and we've all been called to be ministers of the gospel and ministers for the sake of the kingdom. So I want to share with you some thoughts about church ministry first and then I want to share with you how I see that coming to pass in this church body, okay? So I'm going to give you a few points here. If you've got a bulletin this morning, there are some notes on the back there, and you can fill in the blanks and, and uh, have those for further study later. But I just want you to uh, look here with me for just a few minutes as we pass through. Um, if you will take a look in the Bible, as I've already mentioned here in the opening remarks, if you'll take a look at, at church ministry in the Bible, you will find very much that effective ministry in the church is a cooperative effort. It's not a one-man show. It's not just the responsibility of a few uh, that maybe have a vocational calling to ministry, but it, is, it requires a cooperative effort. I don't know if you've recognized cooperative effort on your way into this house this morning or not, but on the way in, there were guys. I stood at my window this morning in my office, and I wept because I saw men who were willing to go and stand in the parking lot, in the heat, 
and stand there and hold a little sign and wave and smile and welcome people not just into our doors but onto our campus okay yeah absolutely The depth of that team continues as people move into these doors and there's a whole other group of people who are standing there to welcome them. And then we've already talked about Jeffrey and his team this morning, how that they've served us here in the context of this service. Behind the scenes throughout this week, Pastor Trey and myself have been working and collaborating together. And Pastor Lisa, we've all been working, collaborating together to see what the Lord would have in store for us here in this service this morning so that the songs that we sing, the, the, the words, the, the melodies, they all work together the message they bring about a harmony that moves us from one place to the next so we've been served and we've seen the effect of collaborative ministry already here in this in this service today that cooperative effort but I want to tell you something today if you will study the New Testament models of a church it makes you realize that there are a lot of churches, not this one because we've already celebrated the cooperative effort, but it makes you realize that there are a lot of churches that operate in a very unbiblical way. They operate in a very unbiblical way because it's just the church leaders who are the chief providers of ministry for the rest of the body, and it's the members who are the primary recipients. But when you, when you look in the Word of the Lord, it makes you realize that a church is going to work its very best when everyone in the church has taken responsibility for the ministries of that church. When you own it and say, this is my church, this is, this is my church. How many of you, this is your faith, amen? This is, my, this, is, this is where I belong. This is where God has planted me. This is where God has called me. And I believe that every one of you, under the sound of my voice this morning, I believe that you have a God-given purpose. And I believe as well that every purpose has a place. And it's to come together under the, under the umbrella of a, of a united vision and move forward in cooperative ministry and see things happen and be accomplished for the work of the Lord. And you, you may be here this morning, you're hearing me talk about this thing, and you're saying, well, Pastor, I just don't know. I'm not, I'm not at a certain level of maturity or a certain level of experience, and I don't have the kind of training or maybe the personality or whatever is required to, to give myself to ministry. And I want to help you with that because I want to share with you my second point today, and that is that ministry, effective ministry, takes place on a continuum. Right now in this room, the Spirit of the Lord has been moving in this place through the worship. And, and some of you, the, the Spirit of the Lord has impressed things upon your heart. And He's been moving in your life as you've been waiting for this moment today to come. And, and as you've prayed and sought the Lord, He's been doing things in your heart and in your life. And you came here with an expectation. But can I tell you something today? That, that the Lord is doing something very different in the person next to you. He may be speaking and using the very same things that, that he's been speaking and using to minister to you in a different way in the life of the person next to you. See, I want to explain that word continuum a little bit. The definition of that, it says a continuous sequence in which adjacent elements are not perceptibly different from each other, although the extremes are quite distinct. Now, certainly, we can agree with that. A, a newborn babe in Christ is not the same. There's a big difference between them and a matured believer. But all the steps along the way, there's so many things about us that are almost indistinguishable, indistinguishable but the Lord is working in our lives in different ways. It, there's, no, there's no tangible measure that says we've moved from this spot to this spot. But the reason I say this is, you know, I'm telling you today that there's, 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 a, there's a truth that's expounded in this room and you're receiving from it one thing and somebody else may be receiving from it another. Now, understand me here. I want to be very clear. When I, when I talk about that, I'm not saying there's no absolute truths. So there's an argument afoot today that says that what's truth for you is not truth for me. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this is God's absolute truth, but it speaks to us 
each individually, personally, at the space and the time that we are living right now in this moment. And it's, it will minister to each of us differently. Some of you will hear a word expounded today, and maybe you don't believe, and that's okay. We, we, we value you. We appreciate you being here to hear the word this morning. But right now, as this word comes forth, it's going to be something to you that's revelatory. It's going to be something for you that's eye-opening. It's going to be something that challenges you to take a step of faith, maybe that you've been putting off for a long time. But there's some other people in this room that they've been walking with the Lord. They've been maturing in the things of the Lord. And this word today is not going to be as revelatory as it is going to be a reminder to them of something that God's already put in them. And they're going to feel some stirring and some moving and some shaking on the inside of them that's different than the moving and the stirring on the other end of the spectrum. Am I making sense to you this morning? My point in all of this is to say that there's a great diversity represented in this room today of experience and maturity in spiritual things. And we're all different. So There there are those here today, like I said, that are are new to Christ. There's maybe some that have journeyed a long way. By the way, can I just share with you a little interjection here that proximity to and longevity with spiritual things does not necessarily make you mature in Christ. Maturity is found in an active pursuit of God, not a passive attendance. But there are different stages of life represented here in this body today. There are young people, there are old people, there are people of different races and nationalities that are here, different backgrounds, different upbringings, different different theological trainings even. And the Lord's going to minister to us all in different ways. But my point is this, that wherever you are on the spectrum, Paul wrote to the church and he says, not as though I have attained if Paul hadn't attained, I can boldly say that I haven't either, right? But Paul wrote to the church and said he hadn't attained. None of us have attained. We're all on this journey together, but we're on different points of the continuum. But my point is this, wherever you are on your journey, there's always going to be somebody around who's a little bit further down the road from you from whom you need to receive. Likewise, as you are on your journey, there's always going to be somebody around you who's maybe a pace or two behind you who needs what you have to offer. I don't care if you got saved last week. There's somebody in your realm of influence that needs what you have, the testimony of your experience with Christ, the revelation, be it however dim it is, of the truth that you have received. There's somebody that needs you to pass that on to them. There's somebody that has need of what you have to give. Every believer on this journey of faith then needs to not only be a partaker of ministry but also a provider of ministry. 1 Corinthians 14, 26, Paul writing to the church at Corinth says this, How is it then, brethren, when you have come together that each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation? Let all things be done for edification. Can I tell you today, if you're under the sound of my voice and you love Jesus and you consider yourself a part of the church, can I tell you that God wants to use you, your life, your witness, your testimony to build up, to edify the kingdom of God? You look, look to the left of you. Just, just go ahead right now. I'll give you permission just to look around the room. Look to your left. And you see that brother or sister sitting there that has something that you need. Look over to your right. You look over to the right and there's that brother or sister there that needs something that you have to offer. They need that text. They need that phone call. They need that word of encouragement. They need need that companionship. They need that friendship. They need that fellowship that you have to extend. They, They need something from you, even if it's just a listening ear.
Third and finally, I want to share with you as far as these points here before we go into how I see the Lord moving to bring this to pass in this body is that effective ministry is about building bridges. Effective ministry is about building bridges. You see, we're all on this journey called faith. Some people haven't begun yet, but the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, I believe, is stirring in this land. I believe that there's going to be an awakening. I believe that, that the Lord is moving. I believe that there is welling up in the hearts of men and women a hunger and a thirsting for something that's real, for something that's authentic, for something that they can just put their faith and their trust in. And our job, our primary job as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ is simply to build a bridge for those that are on the outside so that they can get to the inside. we got to build a bridge so that the people on the outside can get to the inside. There's somebody around you today that they've just been born again. They've got that zeal and that, that just freshness about them that almost makes you sick because you lost that a long time ago. You can refine it. All right? You, you can find new mercies. You can find the Lord's grace. You can have Him restore unto you the joy of your salvation. But there's somebody that is in your sphere of influence, is that they're, a, they're an infant in the, they've just been born again, and they need somebody to help build some bridges for them that's going to move. We can't change them. We can't fix them. We can't do anything really deep in them, but we can, we can be a bridge builder that gets them to a proximity and to a place where the Lord can do a new thing in their lives. We can encourage them. We can coach them. We can challenge them. We can inspire them with the lives that we live and we'll see them move from rebirth through their spiritual infancy and then we've got a lot of, I'd say this is the prevailing category in the, in the body of Christ period and that is spiritual adolescence. But we want to see, we want to see spiritual adolescence move from, from that adolescent stage into adulthood and most importantly what I want to see, my prayer, my great big vision for, for this body specifically is this, that, that we would see people move from consumption to productivity. Do you all know we've all heard enough preaching in this room to save Pitt County? You're, you're aware of that, right? Oh, but church, it's time to take our little lamp out from under the bush and go out here and stand on the rooftop and proclaim the goodness of God and move from consumption to productivity or better yet I should say reproduction so these are these are thoughts that I have about church ministry I, I believe I believe that effective church ministry is is best takes place best when it's a cooperative effort. I believe that effective ministry takes place on a continuum. I'm always reaching up for somebody to encourage me, but I'm always reaching back to encourage somebody else. And I believe that effective ministry is about building bridges. It's not about judging people. It's not about picking them apart and finding out what's wrong with them. It's about helping them to get from one step to the next step to the next step that their lives can be changed from glory to glory into the glorious likeness of Him who has called them out of darkness. I don't know what you guys discuss in your downtime. But for the most part, I love this little lady right here on the second pew. And God couldn't have gave me a better ministry partner. Because you want to know what we do in our downtime? We dream. We plan. We discuss together the things that we believe that God wants to do through our ministries. And now, wait a minute. That, that's not to say that we don't discuss other things, okay? So don't send me the, 
don't send me the letters and the emails and the links to helpful websites that warn of the hazards of focusing too much on other things and not on each other, okay? We get it. We do have other aspirations. We plant flowers. We, we spend time, loving time with our family in other settings. We don't live here at the church. But the thing that most fascinates us outside of our relationship with Jesus and our family and our love for one another is the possibility of what the God who can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can think or imagine would choose to do through us. And I'm going to tell you, that's, that's what we spend a lot of our days and a lot of our hours and moments talking about. Is just saying, well, listen, we love ministry and we thrill at the idea of what God might do and we permit ourselves to dream lofty dreams because we are convinced in whom we trust We believe that he's in the healing business. We believe that he is still a savior and a deliverer. We, we believe that he's still a miracle worker and a way maker. And with that being said, I want to ask you a couple of questions. What is your choice topic of conversation? Do you love to talk about and rehearse What's wrong with the world and everybody in it? Or do you love to talk about what's right with the Lord? Are you rehearsing in your mind and with your lips the glories of the Lord? Are you speaking of his power and his might and his ability to work through you and through this church to change the world around us? Which leads to my second question, and that is, what is the size of your dream? Because the size of your dream will largely depend on the choice topic of conversation. Do you focus on the goodness and the mercy and the faithfulness of God, or are you rehearsing your problems and, or recollecting your blessings? If you focus on the blessing of the Lord so much that you can stand and boldly proclaim the words of the song we sang this morning, I know he'll do it again. I've got to tell you something. As the pastor of this church, I'm believing God for great things in, this, in the life of this church, in this community. You see, I didn't come here today expecting business as usual. I, I came expecting to meet with God's people in God's presence. I came with the anticipation today that one would put a thousand to flight and two would put ten thousand. I came with the expectation that where two or three were gathered in his name that he was going to be there in the midst of them. I came with the expectation that as we lifted the name of Jesus that he would inhabit the praises of his people. That demons would tremble and flee. That bondages would fall off in the marvelous light of his glory as it's revealed here in this house. In short, I came expecting God to move in this place. You see, I'm believing for salvations. I'm believing for healings. I'm believing for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I'm believing for deliverance to flow, not just in this house, but out of this house. I'm believing today that the day is near when the testimony list will be longer than the prayer needs list. See, I'm believing as well, though, for an awakening to the Spirit of God in this community. And here's the clincher. Somebody's got to believe it with me. I said somebody's got to believe it with me. I understand today that I can't believe for this alone. Why? Because there's too much work to be done. There's too many hurts to be touched. There's too much dysfunction to be dealt with. There's too many heartaches that need mending. When I was a little boy, we used to sing a song. And we sang, God's got an army marching through the land. Deliverance is their song, there's healing in their hand. 
with everlasting joy and gladness in their heart. In this army, I've got a part. I want to tell you something, church. I believe the army's been on furlough for too long. Come on. I believe they've been sitting back in the fort just holding their own, waiting for Jesus to come. But I'm going to tell you something today. I believe it's time for the army of God to rise up. I believe that it's time for the army of God to do exploits. I believe that it's time for the army of God again to be back in the business of taking the promised territory that God has issued to them and standing up and saying, Devil, you're not taking another one of our young people. Devil, you're not having another one of our schools. Devil, you're not having another one of our houses of worship devil you're not taking my family you're not ruining my finances you're not wrecking my life nor the lives of my brothers and sisters who are around me I need some folks this morning I need some folks this morning who are going to rise up and take part in this army. I need some Isaiahs in the crowd today who are going to hear again the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall we send and who will go for us? And those who will respond in kind and say, Here am I, Lord, send me. I need some Jeremiah's in this place today who are going to ready themselves with a spirit anointed word who can't contain it because it's like a fire. Shut up in there. Come on, somebody. Help me this morning. I need some Pauls who aren't going to be ashamed to stand with me in this community and say I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God to salvation. You can turn Dr. Phil off and get in your Bible. He's got the answer that you need. I feel a little bit like Ezekiel today. If you got your spot there, I want you to look with me in Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning in verse 1. And the word says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit, brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of a valley, and it was full of bones. And then he caused me to pass through them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. I want to stop right there for just a second, and I want to tell you something. God laid a vision on the heart of Moses of deliverance, of providence, of blessing. He said, Moses, I want you to go and lead my people out. And Moses stood there before that burning bush. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not condemning Moses because more often than not, I can identify with Moses better than I can Ezekiel. And he offered every excuse that he could think of as to why what God was leading him into was not a possibility. Can I tell you something? When God births something in your heart, it's best just to shut your mouth and rely on the wisdom of Almighty God rather than your own which is exactly what Ezekiel does here in this place. God asked him a question he couldn't answer. He didn't know. But God spoke to the prophet said, Son of man, can these bones live again? He said, Oh God, you know. And again, he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Old dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will put sinew on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Can I tell you something today, church? All it takes is obedience. Put aside the excuses and step in obedience. I I love this illustration that said Ezekiel says God said prophesy so I said okay and I prophesied he said so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise can you hear it 
I hear it in this place right now. Just listen. Oh, don't, don't listen to the ambient noise of this room. Don't listen to the whispers of the neighbors around you, but listen to your own heart. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? Because I'm telling you that I was sent here to prophesy to you this morning. I was, I was sent here today to speak to things in your life and in your being that have fallen dormant and lie still. And I'm inviting you right now to listen. Listen to, the, listen to the, the sound of your own heart this morning. And suddenly a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and skin covered them all over, but there was no breath in them. Here we go. Also he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man. And I said to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they might live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. And then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And they indeed say our bones are dry and our hope is lost and we have cut ourselves off. Now I want to tell you this today, church. Lest you take offense, I'm not trying to designate you as being dead, neither physically nor spiritually. My point is not even necessarily so much to focus on the condition of the bones as Ezekiel found them, but more so the way that he left them. Like these bones. I believe there are things that in your spirit that were conceived by God and they were birthed in your heart and in this moment they lie still. Like these, as explained in verse 11, you've, you've lost hope of the vision that God had given you to use you, to work through your life. And you say, Pastor, you don't know. I, know. I do know. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about because now and then I'm convinced of the same thing. Convinced by the lie of the adversary that you could never do what God has asked you to do. Suppressed by your own insecurities and feeling of inadequacy. Because of the estimation of your own ability, you've allowed the gifting of God to lie dormant in you. But it's time to stir it up. It's time to stir up the gift. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And it's time for the army of God to no longer be afraid, but to stand up and say so. Y'all ain't getting this. I can promise you it's better to me than it is to you. Amen. See, where I feel like Ezekiel today is that I sense in my spirit as I stand in this place that there is before me a vast army. Oh, you're not dead. You're alive. You're alive in Christ Jesus. Maybe today you do need salvation. Maybe you do need rebirth. But further still, maybe you're here today and you just need the breath of God to blow fresh over your life today. As I share with you today, in a prophetic voice, I sense an awakening on the inside of you. Things suppressed, things that you've been afraid to do before, things that press you outside of your comfort zone. I feel in my spirit today that things are coming alive in this house for the kingdom's sake. And today, right now, right now in this moment, I believe that the Spirit of God is raising up a mighty army in this place. Can you feel the breath of God blowing in this house right now? Can you feel the Spirit of God moving in this place today? Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? 
Can you hear things coming to life in this house today? Come on, somebody. Jesus. Oh, it's not an army that's just going to simply hold the fort. No, 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 no. It's an army of conquest. It's an army of a different spirit who's going to step out in faith and take territory and do mighty exploits for the kingdom of God. As you begin to feel things being awakened in you, I invite you to join these that have already come this morning. If your desire is for a fresh anointing, a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you desire to see God move in and through your life in incredible ways, I invite you to come. You desire to see the lost being saved, the bound being freed, I invite you to stand up today and say in this army, I've got a part, I've got a part. I want you to step out and join us at this altar this morning and surrender everything to the Lord and seek the breath of God to blow fresh in your life. Oh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Breath of God, fall fresh in my life. There's an army rising up there's an army rising up oh come on church there's an army rising up to break every chain break every chain break every chain let it rise army Rising up, there's an army rising up. Rise up in the presence of God in this place today. Rise up, rising up. You will not be hindered. You will break not every be chain. Break you every will chain. Not be break every chain. There's an army. There's an army. There's an army rising up to break every chain, 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 break every chain. I hear the chains falling. I hear those chains falling.
I'll sing it out. Oh, there's an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising. There's an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. chains falling I hear those 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 chains falling Chains falling. I hear those Hallelujah. chains falling. Come on, There's an army rising. Come on, There's church. an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Every 
And there's no law or statute on the books that can you walk into that place and the kingdom comes with you. You're part of the army of God. You are a part of the army of God. And victory is in your hands. So you go out of here and you stand before the world and you sing your deliverance song. They want to hear it. They might scowl at it. They might scoff at it. But they want to hear it. They're hungry. And they need to hear it. In the spirit and power of the body of Christ. Honey, would you come and join me? And let's pray over this great army of folks this morning. The anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, one more time this morning we dream together. And we dream that this group of people gathered here in this place today are going to leave out of this place this morning as a conquering force. Empowered by the power and the anointing of your Holy Ghost. And God will give you the glory, the praise and the honor. And we're going to sing of your goodness and your mercy. Because Lord, we understand that it's not by might nor by power but by your spirit. But Lord, we believe by your spirit you're raising up an army and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Would you give the Lord a praise this morning? God bless you. We will see you next time. Come expecting something from the Lord. And bring some folks with you. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, break every chain.